Okay, now we've previously covered the need to uh, to replace these bearings. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but I can feel that. It's quite scratchy. It's not spinning freely. That one's a bit better. A bit more freely spinning, but still a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of scratchy. But this one's definitely, definitely, definitely scratchy. I'm going to replace those. Um, not sure what they are in terms of brand. It says Ahead. I don't know that brand. I've not come across it. And a quick internet search. Couldn't find them. Doesn't matter. I've got uh, the 6001Z. Well, I'm going to replace them with rubber seals rather than just these these um, covers, the Z version. So I've got the um, uh, 6001RS, um, two, two rubber seals. These are a Japanese made bearing, and uh, so you can see rubber seals both sides. Need to get these out. Now the problem is, problem with the normal bearing puller is um, you would you know, clamp around the outside and just pull the bearing off a shaft. Now this is internal, so it's a little bit different. So we need to make some form of bearing puller. So we need to do some drawing here to work this out. I've got a sharpie. Here. So here's our bearing. Let's draw that in here. Ball bearing uh, with 12 millimeter gap in the middle, and and then around the outside we've got this housing, and then we've got another bearing sitting in there uh, here, giving us a problem. We can't just pull it through. So we've got two bearings and the housing. I don't know whether there's a step in there or not to stop it uh, to stop it sliding in and out. It's very hard to see in there, but basically I've got to get something in there in there that hooks on and pulls out. Now I've seen things that go in and expand and got a hammer on the end. Haven't got that. Not quite sure that I know how to. Uh, oh, sorry, not sure that I want to go and buy some expensive tools. So we're going to make something here. I reckon that we can do this with a coach bolt. And I'll just get my coach bolt here. This is a coach bolt. If I'm able to get that coach bolt in that 12 mil hole, uh, obviously trimming this head down and having just enough of a lip around there and maybe the ability to split down the middle and we can expand that out to for that lip to catch on the inside of the bearing. Then if we if we uh, maybe make some wings on here, just weld those on. Potentially a couple of holes for a couple of positions. Um, we make some sort of arm that goes on here uh, that, that can attach probably to that hole there. And similarly an arm that goes on the other side. Maybe attaching to a hole there. And maybe we can make this multi-position so that we can use it different lengths. So we'll put a couple of holes in here and we'll just have a bolt through here. I might, yeah, I might make that double size. So what I've basically done is invented, oh, here's one thing I need to be careful of. This, this can't go past the top of that nut. So we need to get rid of that because what I'm going to use on the top here, I think, is just, uh, we'll square this up um, and we'll use the uh, the uh, the thread cutting, you know, the, sorry, the tap, tap wrench um, that we've got for, for tapping. So that looks a little bit like this, um, and that'll that'll give us nice leverage um, to sit over a square section here. So that'll be our handle basically. So that'll give me this much movement. There's not a lot of thread here, but that'll give me this much movement. So that'll that'll basically pull the bearing out past there. So it's a, that's enough movement there. Very cheap. Let's use it. Let's make it out of scraps. Now I went ahead and actually cut my parts out, so I'll give you another a view of this. These are cut out of just um, some leftovers of uh, galvanised angle and, and whatnot. So here's one of the arms, we'll put that in maybe in that position, so that'll slot, slot on there. And you can see I've made it so that there's enough room for bolt to go through there, that to be welded there, and that can be used in multiple positions if we bolt that together. And similarly on this side, we'll just uh, make that the inside surface. That will weld on. These wings will weld onto the nuts. It's not going to be very massively strong, but it's going to be strong enough for that. Now, the only problem we've got now is we need to hold those together on there. 
So how do we go about that? Well, so we, uh, the first thought I had was actually holding it together with a, a um, pipe pipe clamp and, and screw it together and that'd probably work but it may slip around a bit so uh, the, the the idea here is probably to put a bar across maybe use one of these holes put a bar across here with an adjustable maybe a nut on here welded on um, and then we just put an adjustable screw in there and that can clamp down the head of that we'll, we'll be able to turn turn that and that that'll be able to screw in or screw out to hold that captive at a certain distance of course that bar goes straight across and um, and uh, is bolted through here so so let's get this out of the way so we can just draw that in so the bar will go straight across and essentially we'll, we'll, we'll hold that through that hole there don't need that hole here and essentially this tightening this thread in will hold this as a, basically as a clamp. So a bar on either side, maybe a nut welded here, pin through there, and, or again, nut and bolt. I think I'm gonna use six mil M6 or M5 uh, on this, maybe some wing nuts. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, time to do some welding, I think. Oh, maybe some cutting first. In fact, I, I cut this shaft out a little bit crooked, so I might have to do that again. But this one's the experiment. It's only a coach bolt. Cost a few a dollar or two. Um, but if this, you know, this would give me an opportunity to grind this and, and shape it so that I can get it through um, through that uh, hole and then expand it out to basically basically catch on the inside of the bearing so that we can we can draw the bearing out by, by, by basically sc screwing this bolt up. And of course it rotates nicely because it's got a bearing in there. That's the plan. Okay, let's fire up the grinder. It's actually a sander. And get some of these a little bit rounder. All right, we're back at the mini workbench and uh, we just need to pull these parts together. I want to drill through these consistently, so just lay these out, uh, bunch them up, <coughs> whack them into the, uh, the vise here, and just slot them in there, cinch them up. A little. Let's see if we've got that square. Where's our little square? They all seem to be pretty much on each other. I want that to be hanging over the edge. I want it clearance through here for the uh, for the drill to go through. That's good. Tighten that up. Now we'll, we'll just center punch these. I, you can see that I have touched these already. But we will center punch these. And this one. So we've got them center punched ready for drilling. I shall get a, probably a three mil drill first. Actually the six mil will go straight through, but um, we'll do a three mil first and we'll get both of those holes drilled. Then we'll come along and do a similar trick with these ones and get, uh, Get a series of holes drilled in those ones. Okay. All right, it's fairly tight quarters over here near the drill press. Let's get a three mil drill in. It's a bit tight. So 
sounding good. I'll just wind this up. Closer to height. Oops. Tighten up the table. And yeah, that's what should be good. That'll go right in this hole here first. Six mil drill bit might be warm. Six mil drill bit. short work of that. I think what I'll do is I'll attempt to do this one as well just with the 6mm drill bit. That's working really well. Why don't we uh, move that along and see if we can get the next couple. That's all of those drilled. Okay, now we've got our parts just drilled out. It's not precision engineering, but uh, the most important thing is those holes are actually going to be registered in the same position uh, with each other up and down the length. So, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one thing we do need to check is whether or not we're going to have clearance in this particular hole. In fact, speaking of clearance, we should check whether the bolts we're going to use are going to fit. Um, this is a packet of uh, M6x40s I bought a while ago for a project and I've got a few left over so we can cut these down to length right, let's just check whether whoops, whether they've got clearance oh yeah that's perfect all right that's good 
I wonder whether we might, uh, might open those out. I might use these or I might use some shorter ones that aren't uh, coach screws, coach bolts. Um, anyway, that's uh, that was just the check for the 6mm, so in fact let's do the let's do the mock the full mock up um, through there probably the inner one because that's what we're going to predominantly use it will go around the, that way and into there so that that will let's put it in that hole that will be huh, put that in the wrong spot let's swap that over uh, yeah, that does need to swap over that way. Let's do it that way. Okay, that, if you get the drift, will be welded onto there. That's looking pretty good as a rough cut tool. And I can use these holes down here uh, for this for this part that's going to go across. Now, I haven't worked that out yet. That'll be the last thing I work out. All right, looking good. Very happy about that. Let's grab that bolt that we got through that hole. That can go back in its box. And we'll start to prepare. I do need to, this is galvanized, so I do need to grind away any galvanizing so that I can uh, weld directly onto that. Because um, we don't want, galvanizing makes some, some poisonous fumes uh, when you weld it. So we want to stay away from those. So I will, uh, I'll, I'll angle grind that, um, clean that up, probably out, you know, five millimeters or so maybe a bit further away from um, away from the edge and uh, so we'll prepare those for welding we'll probably bolt these together and actually put washers in between when we weld this so that that'll all be held together as an assembly with a washer sandwiching between to give us clearance yeah, I think that's probably the best way to go okay getting ready for welding now it's a bit exciting so here we are uh, after a little bit of grinding on the coach bolt um, I've got two of them here. Um, we get we're getting close actually. That's getting quite close to fitting in there. So so essentially what we're trying to achieve is um, a bit better fit than that, obviously. But we want that to be able to pass through, and we still want to have some notch on both sides. And uh, when it passes through, the idea is to be able to push it through here and then put a wedge in there to expand it out and have that notch sitting behind the bearing. Um, in, inside there so that we can pull on that bearing. So uh, so that's the plan. I think we've got enough distance between the bearings in there to fit that thickness. If we haven't, we'll deal with that later. But uh, for the time being, I need to uh, probably file these corners off to and, uh, and almost reduce its size just a little bit more and then we're pretty much there. So it's, uh, it's almost a little bit exciting. All right, we've done a little bit of work with the welder and the grinder. Um, you can see that here, uh, those two nuts are still in there, but uh, fairly rough welding. I, I really couldn't jig it up quite as well as I thought I was going to be able to, so um, there's a little bit left to be desired in terms of exactly squareness and stuff like that, but it, look, it's going to work fine uh, at this stage. Um, so those holes are through, and I've, I've cut off some uh, some bolts that I already had. I think I'll put, um, I don't have uh, enough of them, but I think I'll put uh, um, locking nuts here with the, the nylon, nylock style nuts in here just to, so that I don't have to do, you know, it's going to work at finger, as finger tight but um, nylon will do there. I've got to clean that thread just a little bit and uh, might give it a quick spray of uh, some primer and uh, that's almost a tool. This is the, this is the, uh, the um, barrel here that we're going to take that out of. I might need to adjust the depth but apart from that I think we're getting very close Right, what you're seeing here is significant progress. We put a little bit of paint on here just to uh, uh, neaten up the, the tool. I've assembled it. Um, and I'm actually realizing, um, I'll get to this bit in a second, but I'm actually realizing that I was going to do a mechanism across here that would hold these together. But in fact, with the ability to tighten up these nuts here, I think we're going to be able to stiffen that to the point where it actually won't splay out and, uh, and it'll actually remain effective. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll attempt to to uh, to demonstrate that. So here you see that I've I've now got the bearing placed over the end. Um, I uh, I ground the end of the the uh, coach bolt to have a flange that would stick out, um, but also be narrow narrow enough to, when squeezed together to fit through the hole. And you can actually see in there that uh, 
the coach bolt is too large to be able to pull it out, particularly now I've put a wedge in there as well. So I've split that out with a wedge. Um, and that's now, you know, that can't come out. So we can actually effectively start to pull that bearing. Um, so the way we do this, oh, the other thing I did was, was I also uh, ground the square section on the end here so that I could use the, the um, tap wrench. I think it's called a tap wrench. To, uh, to clamp onto that square section um, to give us nice purchase. So, um, let's see if this thing works. So I'll just wind that to that point. We'll tighten up these, just so that we don't have any slippage and any danger. And... So those arms are actually really quite tight. So they're sitting on there quite nicely. The length seems to be consistent enough to work. We've got our tap wrench secured here. Let's just secure that a little bit more. And uh, now we can start our, our process of, of pulling that bearing out. So let's see if it actually works. I'm gonna screw it. I need to screw it the right way. It's the opposite direction to it. Oh, I can hear some movement. So as I do that, there's our bearing starting to emerge. Look at that, it's working. So that is exactly what I needed to do and what I needed to achieve. Bearing is out. And there is a step in there. All right. So you can see how that caught on the back there. To get that off, there's two ways. I, I can just unscrew this from here or I can pull the wedge out. I think I'll leave the wedge in there for the time being because we want to pull the bearing out of the other side. I could um, hammer that out, but I may as well just use this tool. Uh, it's a little bit tight. Might use a spanner just to get that past there. That's nice and easy. Our bearing's almost free. Indeed it is. There's our bearing. You can probably hear that that one's a little bit grainy. I think this one was the bad one. Yeah, this one was the bad one. So let's use the same technique. I might as well just plug that through there. You can see the way, the way that's held captive. And we can screw this into here. I'm really actually pleased with this result. So. This was a pretty simple tool to make, and uh, I, I found on the internet a, a tool that would do this, pull bearings out um, in this sort of situation, and it was it was over a hundred dollars, and um, that's just a bit much, I think. I thought for this particular purpose. Um, so let's see if we can. In fact, I could use the span, the span, the wrench on there. Okay, that's almost cinching up. Oh, you could hear the bearing just break loose in a sense. And this is a little bit, um, a little bit satisfying. Now that's going to drop off in a second. So I'll just put my hand there. There it is. Look at that. Bearings are out. Same story with this. Let's wind that back. It's getting a little bit freer. There's our wedge dropped out. In fact, I can show you that if we push that together, oh, I might need a bit more power than my fingers, but we, if we push that together, that, that bearing will slip out. But I think I'll just keep on doing this. And these are quite tight. And out she comes. So, we've released both bearings with a simple little tool made from scraps and a couple of, and a coach bolt. And uh, although it's not pretty, it actually is very effective uh, by the evidence. Next step will be to uh, fit the replacement bearings into here, and then that can go back. This is the uh, blade uh, belt tension um, wheel off the bandsaw, um, and uh, this will be able to go back into the bandsaw once we put the replacement bearings in. That's the next step. Okay, I do need to explain the hammer. This actually was uh, made one weekend up at a friend's place. We were cutting down trees next to the lake. Uh, the overgrowth uh, while the water was down for, for 10 years during the drought. A lot of trees sprung up on the edge of the water. 
and of course to be able to get boats in and out when the when the water came back up to normal levels the trees had to be gone so it was a good opportunity to get rid of them so this is just actually just a part of a branch of one of those trees it was it was dried in the microwave um, and you can see that it it over dried and it's taken it's ta actually taken back some of its shape this this lip here is actually that's the sanded level when I originally sanded that on the belt sander just to smooth it off after it was originally put together I don't know why it's got glue all over it at the moment um, and this ends a little bit worse for wear I am going to drill that back out and put another piece of dowel in like was done here um, I've got some larger dowels so that will be uh, end grain and I quite like this hammer it's um, it's a really good weight I may put a copper ring around here um, I just carve something by hand just to set in a copper ring just to give uh, you know this crack a bit of stability um, of course the other option is to put the put a, uh, a whole lot of uh, super glue down in the crack and that'll stabilize it quite well enough but it's a sort of it's a it's a great little hammer one day this this top section will will lose its its battle with uh, stability and uh, probably come off but the handle's a great little handle that's a decking board an old decking board it was made in uh, 2014 if you can see that so it's going well so here we are back at the mini workbench i've rotated it around just so we can get access to the vise <clears throat> the task here is to pop the new bearings after removing the old bearings into this um, pulley wheel idler wheel, tension, belt tension wheel. Here's the new bearings. Now I'm going to set them carefully using the vise. Vices are not presses but um, in this case we're not using very much pressure um, and we're just using the parallel faces to basically squeeze the the bearing in. The first, first phase of the squeeze so we're not so here I've pushed it in not quite to the lip and I'll push it down to the lip uh, using the vise we'll get both sides in then we'll think about the next step that's as tight as I'll go because that gets us uh, flush second bearings here and because I haven't had this out yet it's still in its plastic so let's remove that with the knife it's in the drawer still. The mini workbench actually sits on top of a tool chest, an old tool chest, so it's it's on wheels basically. An old metal, sheet metal tool chest. Okay, I've I've done the work to, <laughs> to get them out of the box and out of the plastic. And the second one allows I'm able to put the second one in. need to set down further and to do that we'll use a, um, a form of punch so we'll do that in a minute it's time now to start to drive these bearings in I think I'll do this manually well this is the second phase of driving them in I've got a piece of water pipe here that just fits nicely on there and it's not touching the seals and that's the thing I've just got to be careful of I'm going to lightly tap this using the old rough made hammer mallet yeah, that's going nicely. And that bottomed out beautifully. So that's the uh, first bearing in. Second bearing, same. That actually worked really well. Same there. So I believe we're done. Well, we've proven the effectiveness of our bearing puller made from a Dynabolt and scraps. Um, I've uh, ordered some replacement bearings actually for the, the main wheels on the bandsaw of this ones I've opened up. And these are a, a much larger bearing, obviously. And so to extract these, I'll uh, adapt a, another um, uh, coach bolt and uh, we'll see whether 
we can get these bearings extracted out of the wheels. So that's the next step. Um, and I think I'll do that in a separate video. So for now, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful.